Hi and welcome to the Windows System Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I will be your guide in this course. We've briefly seen that object names are not really the ones we give in the actual API. In fact, they have some prefix which is session relative. That kind of makes sense because we don't expect two applications running completely different sessions to communicate with one another automatically by sharing a name because that sharing could be accidental. And so by default, the object manager stores these named objects on a session by session basis. And so we can see that in a tool called WinOBJ from the CC internals tools. And so here's WinOBJ, I'm running it right now. And to see the full information, it's better to run it with admin privileges. So I'm going to just click here to run it with admin rights. And once that uh, comes up, then we can go ahead and see what's going on here. And so there are various directories here, and these directories have nothing to do with the file system. These are directories in memory. This is how directories are managed and objects are managed within the object manager in the executive. For our purposes, we're going to just look at these sessions subdirectory. And here you can see there are a number of sessions, such as session number one, which is the one I'm running right now as my own user. And here's base named object. So all the things that we see here are really all the object names that have been created by processes running in session number one, with whatever type. We can see here sections, we can see here events, we can see here perhaps uh, semaphores from time to time, and mutexes, and so on. So these are named objects created from session number one. Now session zero is actually special here because everything that's created from session zero resides here in base named objects under the root directory. And so everything created from session zero is here. And in fact, even normal applications can create or at least open objects, assuming security would allow it, that are part of session zero, which allows us to actually share objects between session zero and some other session or between any session that we want through that namespace in session zero. And to do that, what we need to do is create an object with the name global backslash and then the name that we want. So if you're creating an object named global backslash ABC, it's going to be here inside this base named objects under the root, which is technically the one that's accessible by default to session zero processes. And so you can see various objects here, which may or may not be shared, but if we do want to share something across sessions, this is the way to do it. Another thing that we've seen with object names is that they're, they're visible. This is one of the downsides of having object names. It is easy to locate these names using tools such as Process Explorer or programmatically. There are actually APIs in the native API, in the NTDLL API that allow us to enumerate uh, sorry, handles in processes and so uh, we can get the, uh, the various object names. In fact, we can enumerate all the handles in the system and tools such as Process Explorer use these APIs. And so it may be possible for a malicious party or even by accident to create an object with the same name so that our application is going to be affected by it in some way, We're probably going to fail in some way or maybe even have a malicious actor make changes to the object and that would affect adversely our application. So there must be a way or at least it should be a way to hide these kinds of objects and this in fact is possible using something called a private object namespace. A private object namespace provides a way to create a private namespace, a name only known to the applications that are doing the sharing, and that name cannot be exposed through tools or through an API. And so this actually hides the real object names behind something which is not penetrable unless you are running inside the kernel. We can also further strict security by providing only certain seeds or certain processes with a certain integrity level 
to be able to access these private namespace. And so we're not going to discuss seeds or integrity levels uh, in this course, but we'll discuss that in the later course. And so here are some of the APIs that we need to use to make that happen. That's create boundary descriptor. This is a way to provide security settings for the namespace we're going to create based on that uh, boundary descriptor. So for instance, we can add seeds that are allowed to use anything within that boundary descriptor. And then we can create that private namespace that we want. We can open a private namespace that already exists. And of course, we can close that where needed. So let's see an example of what that uh, looks like and what the effect of it are. And so what we have here is the same application that we've seen previously with called basic sharing. This one is called private sharing. And the only difference is that I'm not going to create the object under the standard namespace, so it's completely visible, but instead I'm going to create a private namespace here. So here's how I do it. I'm creating a boundary descriptor, giving it a name. And that name, in fact, is not normally visible. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a well-known seed, which includes the users group, uh, which is the simplest way to say, okay, all the ones that belong to the users group, which typically is all the users, they are allowed to access any private namespace created based on that boundary descriptor. And so I'm creating this seed and then adding that seed to the boundary descriptor. Again, I'm not going to get uh, deep uh, into these functions, but they're fairly easy uh, to use. And then I'm creating the actual private namespace based on that boundary descriptor we previously created. And I'm going to call that private namespace here my private namespace, but it can be, of course, anything. And this is the thing that is completely hidden and will not be able to be visible to any entity. So I'm just using a simple define here to provide this particular namespace. So once I have called create private namespace, this technically can fail because there may be the case that uh, it's, al it's already there, it already exists. And this is because the private namespace is not really a kernel object, in, in the normal sense of the world, word, so create here doesn't really do open. So we have to, in this case, say, okay, if, it, uh, if create fails because probably it already exists, let's just open a handle to these private names because that means another process already created the private namespace for, with which I want to share something. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and use create file mapping and Notice the sh name of the object. Now the name of the object is going to be my private namespace name, then backslash, and then whatever name I want, like my shared memory. But now my shared memory is under its own namespace, so, so it doesn't mix with another object, which is just called my shared memory. They are not the same at all. And of course, the private namespace should not be visible, which we'll see in a moment. And then um, the rest of the code is actually exactly the same as we've seen earlier. I'm mapping the view and then allowing the user to make changes uh, or read or write to the, uh, to the shared memory. Let me run that. And once I run it, it's here in my other screen, but again, it doesn't really matter. The point here is that if I go to look for private sharing, here it is, notice the name of the section. It's called backslash three dots and then backslash in my shared memory. So the complete name is invisible. There's no way to get to it from user mode. No matter what API I, I'm going to use, I will not be able to see the real full name of the object, which means that malicious entities, unless they have some kernel component, cannot really mess around with my objects. So that's a, a good thing to, to consider and definitely a good idea uh, for when we're trying to actually do this kind of sharing.